and gentlemen, I'm Vinita Bhatia. I'm the editor of Hotelier India magazine and I'm delighted to welcome all of you on a Friday evening with some really uh, esteemed people from the hospitality <coughs> industry who are going to give you a lot of food for thought, not only for the weekend but for the rest of the year. They represent that one division which has been critical in the past couple of years and even before that uh, in the hospitality industry. But uh, their relevance and the criticality of their operations actually came to fore in the past uh, two years when things were uh, topsy-turvy for the entire industry. They were the ones who literally were the flag bearers and ensured that business continued as uh, normal as could be. And uh, that is the whole idea behind the Pillars of Procurement webinar. To give you a further insight about the session, and more importantly about our esteemed panels, I will hand over now Mr. Nitin Nagrale, who is the founder of HPMF, the leading body for procurement professionals in the country. And he is the, the Karta Darda of this seminar, and he is also the curator. So over to you, Nitin. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and Namaskar. Uh, I'm Dr. Nitin Shankar Nagrale. I'm the founder and general secretary of Hospitality Purchasing Managers Forum. I also work uh, as a CEO of a company called Quality New Zealand. We, the company is owned by a few cricketers of New Zealand. So today we will be, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to Hotelier India, ITPO, specifically Vinita and uh, Mr. Vibhorsha <coughs> for giving us this great opportunity to tell all of you about what we do. Uh, most of you know what is procurement. Uh, you must have heard of purchasing, supply chain, materials management. But today we will talk about some pillars of procurement and who better than the esteemed panel consisting of uh, some of the top leading professionals who head the procurement department for different organizations. I want to introduce all of them first to you and then thereafter we'll take it forward from here. So uh, my first panelist is Mr. Basil Massey. Uh, Messi Saab today works uh, with the Brookfield, uh, the, who have taken over the Leela group of hotels recently. Uh, Mr. Messi joined this group uh, some time ago and he was taking care of the retail, uh, the, the property division, but now he takes care of the hotels as well. And uh, Messi Saab uh, has an experience of over almost 40 to 43 years. Uh, he's done several pre-openings and several projects in India, uh, mostly for the Taj group of hotels and also uh, several other brands within India. Uh, Masiza, welcome to you. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy that uh, a person of your caliber, of your charisma is part of this esteemed panel. Thank, Thank you, you. Masiza. Second is uh, Mr. Uh, Bharnidharan Ramaswamy. Mr. Bharnidharan Ramaswamy has over 30 years of experience in the procurement fraternity. He's my ex-boss. I have worked for Mr. Bharni at the uh, Radha Krishna Hospitality. And I'm really grateful uh, to him that he's part of this. Bernie has been heading the procurement for married group of hotels for over 10 years. And now he not just takes care of India, but he takes care of the APC market, uh, the APAC market. And I'm, I'm personally proud that an Indian has reached that level. And Bernie, all of us look forward to you, to meet you and look up to you to reach uh, a certain level, uh, a caliber of what you have achieved for, uh, for yourself and for the for for people uh, like us so thank you bernie for uh, being part of this wonderful session my third panelist is mr sudhir gupta uh, gupta saab takes care of the retail uh, and luxury division of itc group primarily uh, the hotels as well and he's he's also in the industry for so many 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 years uh, working for uh, itc for a long time and uh, after a long time, there is a very intelligent procurement person uh, got into the hospitality industry. Uh, talks absolutely smoothly. Uh, very, very, very inform informed uh, person and uh, very, very knowledgeable and talented. So, Gupta Sab, I'm, I'm personally happy that you also got time to talk to us and talk to the fraternity and give uh, some words of wisdom. So, thank you for being on the panel. Thank you so much, Nitin. Thank you. Thank you. And then the fourth and the it's last. Pleasure panel. to be here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hariharan. Hariharan Saab uh, has been working with the ISCL, the, uh, the Taj group of hotels for several years. He's opened many hotels in project, takes care of the project and pre-opening and several other things. And uh, Hariharan is a very sharp shooter, uh, talks less, 
but uh, extremely talented once again. I'm really thankful to all of you. Hari Haran Saab, I want to welcome you to this group, wherein uh, most of us uh, mm. belong to the hospitality fraternity and represent procurement. But I'm happy that you uh, have the project background and you would be able to add a lot of value to this session today. So thank you uh, thank for you. being of this session. Thank uh, you, Dr. Nitin, us. and thank you to uh, Hotelier uh, for inviting uh, me. Thank you very much. I look forward to a wonderful session. Thank you. Today, these four gentlemen are representing different group hotels, and I'm sure in audience, uh, most of you would be wondering what is going to happen, what is pillars of procurement. So there are several pillars of procurement, but today we'll talk <clears> about two uh, which will define the future of procurement of hospitality industry. Uh, may not be uh, global, but for, for India for sure. Uh, we'll talk about several subjects. Uh, we'll talk about what's happening today. All of us are aware of what has happened in COVID period. What uh, went through us, most of the departments were closed, uh, hotels were closed, restaurants were closed. In fact, some of the hotels uh, closed on permanently. Uh, some employees lost a lot of jobs. But then what was working was the supply chain. Uh, every organization needed something or the other through the supply chain. And I'm glad that all of us were part of that. Uh, I have been in touch with many of my fraternity friends and uh, it, it was really challenging last two years. But nevertheless, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And today, uh, uh, as the government of India has also announced the opening of international flights, uh, there is so much of positivity which is coming in. The elections are over. Uh, I'm sure the COVID has also gone back and uh, it's going to be all positive from here. So keeping all of this in mind, uh, I'm going to be taking this session forward. And uh, I have my first question to Mr. Bharanitar and Ramaswamy. Be as vocal as you can. Provide uh, guidance to all of us. Uh, give us some insights uh, on the questions and also make us learn a lot in the procurement fraternity. This particular department is very close to my heart and I'm extremely proud that uh, this is given an importance by Hotelier India and uh, they have created this special session uh, for all of us. So putting my first question uh, to you is, uh, what are the recent changes uh, you have made uh, in your procurement strategy especially in the line with the pandemic and uh, its aftermath. Thank you, Nitin, for this opportunity. And uh, it should be a kind of amazing uh, platform to share and, you know, listen and, you know, and uh, learn. Okay, that's what I strongly believe. And like, you know, when you are introducing, I was just thinking about it. It's such a, what a wonderful team we have. Like we have team from Taj, you know, ITC, and, you know, Leela, and it's, it's amazing, you know, to really share and learn. Okay, so coming to the question, like when you asked, uh, First of all, before even getting into the what strategies uh, we adapted, I would like to sincerely thank you know the, the, all the procurement team who worked, who put in so much of efforts during this last two years of pandemic. And also, I do not want to forget thanking all our supply partners, you know, who genuinely extended their best possible support, you know, during this pandemic because it is not a kind of you know just you know as a procurement team we cannot do without the support of the you know. Uh, many stakeholders, you know, there are some operations teams, there are you no know, finance teams, you know, and uh, of course, supply partners are very important who are, we always work as a bridge between the suppliers and the, our organization, am I right? We need to bring good things to the organization at the same time, we need to take back good things back to the supply partners. I would like to sincerely thank them before starting the session. And when you talk about what are the kind of changes we did, you know, honestly, there could be many, many changes. It's based on the category, based on the business, based on the hotel. But broadly, what comes to my mind is certain th things, you know. So we always had certain principle called ABC principle in procurement, you know, which I keep talking to my team every time. ABC principle in procurement is nothing but, I say, advanced planning, benchmarking, and collaboration, okay? So honestly, in the pandemic, advanced planning is not always possible, but it is possible to some extent. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in the next six months. We don't know. We are not having. We are not having a visibility of what's going to happen next month. You know, that was the situation. But however, when it comes to advanced planning, what was very important for me is. So I always strongly believe that doing a procurement job of meeting the supplier and negotiating is only 10% of the weightage. There are 90% of the weightage lives in you know what we do, like you know what kind of product we want to buy. 
and when do we want to buy how much we want to buy where do we want to buy you know and uh, in what kind of you know sku levels we want there are so many things we need to do homework right so advanced planning is one thing you what we were keep on you know trying to maybe that advanced planning could be certain category could be one week before certain category could be one month before or one year before but advanced planning was something is what we were so it's more like a going back to the basics you know that's what is one of the basic fundamentals you know and benchmarking coming to the benchmarking today with so so much of inflation going up and down you know and every every product price is going up and you know hotels are working towards always there is a cost pressure am i right there is a kind of hotels are not making much of revenues there is a cost pressure so what is very important is that benchmarking of the products you know with the benchmarking of the what we are buying with the different options available in the market you know different you know so benchmarking could be our past purchase price could be one benchmarking our uh, alternate supplier quotation could be benchmarking different market indicators could be benchmarking different brands could be benchmarking our wholesale purchase price could be benchmarking inflation could be benchmarking what is the benchmarking we are measuring about against okay. okay so that something is very important and third is collaboration when it comes to the procurement i strongly believe nothing i can do alone or nothing a purchase manager can do alone without having a collaborative approach with the chef engineering it or with suppliers or with the logistic or transport or warehouse everything you know so it's more like a, we need to collaborate okay so going back to the basics is one of the basic fundamental what we really imposed and fo focused on and the second thing is that gaining the ups and downs uh, trying to be patient with the suppliers trying to be patient with the you know uh, team and then building the confidence that you no know, our businesses are coming back and then we are trying to do you know better things for the future and then you know uh, giving them the confidence that you know we are here to stay together work together and grow together you know giving that confidence is the another you know important aspect what i feel you know we start to focusing on and uh, during the whole process of when business was down and business is about to come up so we tried identifying those areas of opportunities where we can do things uh, which will help us once the business is back something like for example uh, uh, efficiencies you know working closely with it engineering or you know chefs working on various efficiencies methods and also like uh, we focused on uh, cleaning up our internal database you know that's something called as big data what we call you now cleaning up the internal database standardizing the item master standardizing the you know vendor master so that you now our database looks very clean and you know robust you know when the business is coming back so these are all the basic you know steps what we focused on nitin so there could be many things i just wanted to stop here so that i want to listen to other panels as well uh, that's wonderful bernie this abc definitely uh, you know many of us do many things but we don't use these terms and i'm i'm really uh, thankful again that uh, this advanced planning benchmarking and collaboration for sure is definitely a key to success a uh, lot of uh, purchase managers are <coughs> uh, taking this liberty to say uh, work in isolation and uh, a lot of uh, people think that what they are doing is right uh, but then they do not give the due uh, importance to the supplier partner and then they fail and uh, so so they then wonder how why, and why have i failed why did i not get uh, supply at the last minute but then the that collaboration or networking was missing and i'm i'm uh, really glad that you put that so easily masi sir you wanted to say something yeah there's a really good point which when uh, it has uh, raised so what we uh, further what we have enhanced in our programs is that we are doing town halls for our vendors to give them the brief what we are doing and what our future plans are and thank you is we are taking a very very good initiative to <clears throat> help the vendor because they are also hurt they are also going through a very tough time we take the payment statuses from them where they are what uh, what is the status of the payment though because they look at us because we are the people who negotiated with them and we are the people those who have to support them at the payment uh, terms also and the payments also uh, of course uh, these are the without vendors and we are grateful to the vendors during this time how they have helped us so that's what i wanted to just add into it thank you uh, correct uh, you know i i agree with basi sir here again wherein uh, yes the hotels or the organizations didn't have much cash but uh, the purchasing manager must get involved in the payment cycle and prioritize and help the supply partner in to some manner uh, that definitely yes basi sir again even we have uh, the consolidation which is helping <clears throat> us a lot to give a 
num a good number to the vendor to supply, to quote, and to get the better price from them. So we are working on a very, uh, like the consolidation. There are so many items which we do, have never touched, but now we are doing the consolidation of those so we can platter a good quantity in front of the vendor so he can also, we can even get more vendors on the platform if you have a consolidation with us, that yeah. we can help other vendors also. Thank you. In a simple term, uh, a vendor and a client relation or a uh, purchase relation is like a coin. A coin has two sides, but both the sides are equally important. Whether it's heads or tail, it's for me, it's, uh, I am the client, a vendor is the other part. A coin cannot function without just, if both the sides I am there or both the sides the vendor is there, the coin doesn't have any value. So yeah. it's, it's that relationship that works with the business partner. I again say that, you know, if today we are number one strongest brand in the industry is because of also the vendor partner who are equally responsible or equally they take that pride in being us being the number one brand. So a business partner relationship, we never call them as a supplier or anything. They are our business partner. Like the client is one side of my coin. A business partner is or the vendor partner is other side of our coin that is there. The vendor partners has helped us a lot in terms of this pandemic situation. They have given out of their ways that they have given in terms of commercial free, in terms of discount, in terms of waivers. I can't say more than that. You know, the kind of support that they have given uh, to the industries that is, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really uh, unbelievable. We also have tried to give some our vendor partners in terms of what best we can do in terms of our room uh, rates and other things what commercial better discounting can be given. So we always try to do that, you know, because a we, we can't run the business without the help of this business partners. So they are a very valuable uh, chain in the ecosystem. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yeah, you know, there was so much of quick turnaround which happened that COVID happened to everyone together. It's not that the buyers or uh, the customers got the COVID and then they got affected and then the supplier partners were not. But uh, the supply partners showcased <coughs> the ability. Uh, all import channels were closed. Everything else coming out of India was closed. But then the make in India or the people who manufactured here in India uh, showed their ability and then they really did a wonderful job to sell us through. So uh, through this platform, I really want to thank all the supply partners uh, who are supplying to the hospitality industry within India, whether it's Marriott, ITC, Taj, Obroes, or uh, Leela. So thank you. Thank you for being there and thank you for supporting us. And keep supporting us so for us to be the world-class hotels. Uh, there are so such good brands here. Uh, ITC, Leela, Taj, Marriott, absolutely brilliant. I'm really glad uh, that this is a luxury panel. Uh, which which we are representing. Uh, my second question is to uh, Mr. Gupta. Uh, Gupta sir, now uh, the strategies which uh, everybody spoke. Uh, in fact, uh, I I know that you've been in the system for some time, but you started taking care of the hospitality division very lately. So this uh, has any of your procure procurement strategy resulted in driving any competitive advantage for your business? Uh, if it is yes, then if you can tell us, give us some example of it, please. Thank you, Nitin. It's a pleasure to be a part of this Mnet panel and Hoteliers India. Uh, I thank all of you once again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Nitin. Say, uh, all this pandemic has taught us a lot, and uh, no industry has been immune to this COVID-19. You name any country, any society, any industry who have not been trying their best to meet the challenges. And in case of, uh, you know, hospitality industry has been our endeavor, uh, you know, particularly for the procurement to, to, to be on the forefront fighting this battle. Uh, of course, there have been different functions during this lean time, during this pandemic challenging time, who have been working behind the scene to get the business. But it has been, whether the business was there or not, it was the procurement team who was always fighting like the soldiers on the borders on the on the on the field on the ground uh, even if the the hotels were closed you know business was not happening there are a lot of operating teams who, who were supposed to be deciding inside the hotel to maintain and and to serve even the quarantine people many of the hotels have tied up for that and for that required a lot of work lot lot of uh, arranging and sourcing of the products 
uh, and especially when everything was shut down, there was shortage of labor, there was shortage of raw materials, uh, the, uh, the manufacturing operations were not on, and, and the vendors, in spite of, as all of us were calling the business partners, so here came the lifeline. We call them the lifeline of our business. You know, it emanated from buyer supply, buyer, buyer supply to going into the partnerships, and then it came into the lifeline. Uh, so these were the people, these were the partners who helped and, and who supported the business operations to run in the difficult times. Non-transparency in the supply chains, right? And the new reality in wake of these disruptions, you know, uh, required a lot of flexibility and a lot of focus on the risk management to keep on running the operations. Okay. You know, th there was a shift in, in the whole directions, uh, how the procurement teams were operating before. So the key task or the challenges were to, to respond, to rebuild, and, and to sustain. So okay. RRS, or, or you call them to, to, you know, to respond, to rebuild, and to thrive. So a lot of work was done, a lot of new initiatives were, uh, you know, taken, which, which uh, forced us to uh, make a change in the procurement strategy. Okay, I, I'll, I'll just, uh, what comes to over my mind are some of them, right? There was enhanced, uh, you know, uh, focus on visibility of the supplier, so of the partners, and also the strengthened uh, business partner relationship. Now, it was so necessary. Visibility, when I, I stress a lot, of course, the relationship part we have been talking before, and, and the business can't survive without this strengthened relationship. But visibility on the supplier partners, that is something we learned, you know, and we valued during these tough times. When you spent, you started spending more time, when you started, uh, you know, having a look on the trends, on the historical data, uh, on coordinating with the suppliers, you know, on day-to-day -day activities to get your supplies at the tough time, it made you, you know, identify the risks, okay? Uh, uh, some, some of the business partners, or, uh, you know, maybe were performing so good during the smooth times. But because of X, Y, Z reasons during the difficult times, you learn where are the risks, okay? Correct. What are the capacity constraints, okay? Because they are also dependent on so many other, uh, uh, you know, subcontractors or subpartners. But there are some of them vertical, which, which uh, you know, help you to rethink your strategy for the future as well. So I'll say uh, the enhanced visibility of the business partners help you. Uh, yeah. You strengthen your relationship for future. Number two, there was a lot of focus on, uh, you know, creating a proactive business scenario for the, for the operations, wherein uh, to arrange or for, to enhance the sourcing, uh, a lot of focus on localization, you know, regional, city-wide sourcing, the regional sourcing. So you did not look in the normal times too much on these kind of aspects, but here you were forced, you know, during the disruption, to look at localization of supplies, whether it's the groceries, you believe in your big chains always have so many contracts wherein you try to leverage the volume and you have suppliers either in one part of the country or, or regional at least. Here you are forced to have some kind of contracts or some kind of relationship or arrangement locally. If you don't do that, you would not have survived during these tough times. Absolutely. Second was Indianization. Okay, there are a lot of things you, you import. But uh, during the tough times, the, the kind of situation we had abroad, the container shortage, the shipping, shipping and the logistics issues, and the steep rise in the cost forced you to look at the internal resources, look at the internal R&D and technology. So a lot of work was, uh, you know, uh, exploration was done to find out the alternatives within India, right, for the imports. There are brand substitutions. When the brands you wanted were not available, you, you, you got into the R&D now to test and try. So that happened. You know, there were alternatives, alternative sourcing, which, which was created just to ensure the supplies. So this was one part, uh, you know, of the whole procurement strategy changes. Number two, I think most important became, uh, uh, again, a lot of focus on enhancing the whole, uh, you know, the area of operations of the procurement team. Here, we, your focus became to garner, to support the operations team to get more business, to regain the confidence of the customers, 
So you are working during the tough times to regain the confidence. Okay. So in our case, we started a, a new initiative called We Assure. I think a lot of uh, technological developments uh, were undertaken. A lot of collaborative efforts were taken with the vendor partners. And our whole focus on the product development part became very handy. It, it, it became, so I'll say product development uh, uh, was the key during this time, these times, which we have driven. And, and I will say, I don't hesitate to say, collaboration uh, became the hero for us. And why, we, why I say so, collaboration is the hero because a lot of VSR uh, equipments, we could develop indigenously. Uh, you know, products like uh, ozonators, for example, with which work on so many UV technologies, the ionizations for the uh, disinfections, which were earlier mm -hmm. being imported, but here in a short time, because time was essence, we could develop with the, uh, you know, work hand in hand with our technical teams and, and the vendors team uh, mm -hmm. to develop those products. Likewise, uh, you know, you uh, we worked on uh, R&Ds to, to develop the, uh, you know, technology for disinfection into the AC yes. environments. Hotels work on air conditioning and there were a lot of scare of getting the infection through the air conditioning. Photohydro ionization kind of technologies. I think we were the first hotel chain in India and in Asia to, you know, to come out with or implement quickly on the PHI technologies. Yeah. So these were some some of the initiatives which I uh, I'll say we had taken, which were the shift in the procurement technology, good learnings. I think this pandemic has taught us uh, a lot uh, how to look at the sourcing for the future. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. You know what's evident out of this overall discussion is uh, the role of the supply partner. Absolutely brilliant. Everybody uh, is. Uh, praising them and uh, what is also different which I want to uh, bring it uh, on the on the dais today is uh, my first panel discussion I had done about 18 years ago and there we would call vendor partners or supply partners as suppliers. Uh, today all of us are uh, treating them as partners which is wonderful and without the partners there is no future. So uh, both of us sell together, uh, both are part of the same coin and live, we live together for better future of uh, the organization. Masih Sab, you have, you have uh, yeah. some input. Yeah, I remember the, the days when we did the first show in the Goa. It was raining like yes. pouring at that time. Well, this COVID has given us, uh, you know, the, from the human touch, we are going to the technology transformations, the new behavior of the client, towards the clients, you know, is a totally turnaround, which has given an, another challenge to the purchase to, you know, work on it. New normal has changed the manpower structure also. So that's also a hit which uh, we are working on, which we are, you know, we are need to get new things into it, the IT technology, you know, a lot of things which have come into it. So that is part of the uh, part of this. Thank you. I have a question for you, Masi sir. Now we talked about uh, the role of supply partners uh, or vendor partners. Uh, you know, many of them need help. Uh, need help in terms of what to do, how to do, what product to bring in, when to bring in, how to sell it, how to approach. Uh, I call them development practices. Now, uh, you being in the industry for several years, I'm I'm aware of many vendor partners which you have developed. Now, if you can tell us uh, what is the effect of uh, su the, the supply partner development practices on your hotel's performance? And if you can share some examples, uh, Mr. Massey. Yes, there was a time when <clears throat> all the consultants, you know, used to tell us these are our swatches. Please get them imported from Singapore. Yeah. So everybody knows it, you know, the, how we were used to do that. But the vendors, we develop those items here in India. We develop, we save a lot of money out by, by developing it. By developing here in India, gave us a delivery time, faster delivery time, a good price for that material. We could monitor that production. We could see what's happening with our uh, materials. And very good examples, which we, uh, we have done number of uh, developments here. What was the bed linen we were supposed for writing? We were supposed to, you know, import from uh, the overseas. 
but we develop the same fabric here and we save really time, energy. We could save that he, everything and the time was saved, money was saved. We could see things happening in front of us and, and that was became a landmark for us. As well, we have done the same with the furniture also. We were getting furniture from China for our properties. The, our, I won't name the vendors. They put in heart and soul. They were almost match the price with the and better quality which we were which we got from India because India has the best wood. India has the best best uh, uh, you know furniture manufacturers here. So that is one of the most beautiful things which we have done for the fabrics, for the lights, for furnitures. So this which, which we develop in India today, we have the made in India. Everything is made here from, you know, the, from the chillers to the lifts to the dimmers. Everything is here. There are certain items which we need to import from outside. But developing your own vendor, giving them an opportunity to do something, I'm 100% sure, and we were successful, and we are successful today, and we are proud of our vendors, those who are our associates, who have developed for us, and we don't have to spend cent dollars outside. We only have to pay rupees in India and get our material. So that dollar we can save for something else, which we need to which we don't produce here in India, but I will, I thanks all my, my associates, my, uh, those who have helped us and whatever the, the our achievements, whatever we are today is because of the, uh, our associates, which have given us the, we gave them the opportunity and they clicked it and they delivered it. You know, to the audience, I also want to give some insights. Uh, when we talk about vendor development or supply partner development, uh, it is not just replacing of a product or creating product here locally, but holding hand of the supply partner and bringing it, bringing him to the required level of the organization. Now, there are different organizations who are being represented by the gentleman here. They have different specifications. Every organization wants to be different because they want to shine and stand uh, apart from everybody else. They want to be better than the other organizations. So uh, this vendor partner first needs to understand what we what the organization wants. Second, uh, they would be told how can they reach that level. So in terms of changing the their production practices, in terms of technical know-how, in terms of uh, yes, Mr. Sir. You see, when we are uh, developing the new vendors, what it also helps us to break the monopoly. If you are working with just one vendor and he takes for the guarantee, but you are developing more vendors for the same product, then you get the power that to negotiate, you get the power, you get the faster deliveries, you don't get increases. But at the same time, vendors are the only one who comes when we start using the viscos in our sale. We used to buy for 200, 300 uh, rupees a meter. When the viscos came into it, it used to give the same sheen, same look, but the viscos was mixed into it. And that, uh, that thanks to our uh, interior teams, those who guided that very, very well, you said, we need to guide those vendors. Like hangers we are developing in India, we were importing everything from abroad. Now our my table is full of hangers, which are because Lira used to import, but our vendors here, our associates have developed the identical hangers for us. So we don't have to import them now. So we can, as well, we can save new product development. We can co save cost and we can widen the circle of our deliveries sure. because at the same time, like we have the, the fresh fruit, uh, frozen uh, meat which has come in and which is giving us a good saving at the same time. We are using them for the banquets, right. but for the a la carte, we're buying the uh, fresh one. But yeah, is so it messy. Mr. Hariharan wants to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, just to add on to uh, Massey's thing, I know Massey also knows uh, his work with various uh, business vendors at the project level. I'm proud to say that while we have developed vendors within the country, we have also ex made them export. We have exported, we have imported from US from the vendors in India, whether it was fabrics, whether it was furniture. I don't want to name the vendor partner and in one of on the, the new project, we imported from India and we were proud to do that. When people were looking at China, we were the one who got it imported from India. 
So that was because of the development that was done in India for the fabrics, for the furniture, complete furniture, the fixed furniture. It was sent, it was installed at a different continent. So we have a wide, uh, you know, business partners, the capability that is there, the make in India that is there. Today you name like uh, the various HLR uh, baggage scanner or say the elevator manufacturers, you name it, your laptop, desktop servers, anything you name it today, you don't need to depend upon. But there are still challenges in certain yeah. areas, you know, yeah. uh, certain it's equipment, there are challenges, uh, right. which we still need to know. I will say like, for example, a dishwasher, you still have challenges to get it made here. So we still strive to do that because with the challenge in the with the duties being cut off now, there's restriction on import duties. The kind of rate has gone up, you know, from eight hundred thousand dollars to seven thousand dollars a container. It's a major challenge on a day to day basis. So a local meal in India is the one that we should really look at. I think I wanted to throw a very different perspective uh, to the whole panel. When it's talk about the vendor development and vendor, you know, uh, so you know, vendor partnership, it is not about just always helping them to give business. There are some suppliers in the difficult time they want to reduce the business. There are sometimes suppliers wanted to go out of the business. Okay, how are we handling them? You know, because I'll just give a because of the health challenges. There are some family challenges. Like for example, I know one of the vegetable vendor in one of the markets. Uh, the owner of the you know company passed away his wife started handling they came and said you know, they wanted to withdraw the completely business you know and then and then the purchase manager of the hotel he just spoke to us and then we just got involved and then we told them no problem whatever you wanted to do please do it if you want to withdraw completely please withdraw no problem okay but it's a big risk for the company right as an organization the vegetable supplier not supplying from next day is going to be a big risk. Yeah, yeah, so we gave them a confidence. We supported them in terms of getting the payments immediately. We told them, fine, out of 10 hotels, want to supply only one hotel, please do that. But the moment we started giving that confidence, they bounced back and then they started supporting extensively. Am I right? What I see is that many times we, one is the developing a supplier, another, another is more like hand-holding the supplier, you know, and the way how suppliers try to give a hand-holding to us, it's also equally important. You know? There are so many cases in this pandemic period where uh, yes. Some suppliers wanted to stop, you know, instead of supplying to many. They were. So, how are we really, really, are we really giving that human touch? You know, are we really giving a consideration, you know, while they are in a trouble? You know, are we really listening to them? You know, so the, this is a different perspective I want to share here in the forum. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. You know, all of this brings in such a great amount of loyalty, and that helps the organizations. I'm, 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 you know, this is what I have seen that you start holding hands, start helping the vendor partners. And then they help you throughout your life. So the, the the person who shines the most has the best of the relationships with the supply partner. T take my words uh, for it. Uh, Hari, I have a question to you now. Now, uh, you have talked about uh, products being uh, imported or being made here, uh, replacement being done. So can you tell me, uh, do you prefer sustainable, sustainably manufactured products? Uh, because today there is there is so much of awareness which is being created within the world that uh, it it is either sustainable or it has to be bought from local market or it is uh, green in nature. So tell me whether do you prefer it? If yes, then are, are you able to charge higher uh, price to your customer? Sustainability <clears throat> is something which is an ecosystem that is within us. You know, at the group level, we have a sustainability and at IHCL also. We also bought in a new brand called Patia, which is like what we do it on the sustainability part. Uh, you know, way back in since 2008 or prior to that, we have the certification for sustainability. So sustainability, like when we say three forms of the procurement, cost, quality, delivery, I would like to add one more thing. In, the, in addition to these three, three, there should be the fourth pillar, which should be the sustainable. So today, any products or services that you're getting into your hotel premises, well, there is one part this is required as per the business, you know, what the guest wants, you know, so that is one part which we are into the service industry. The other thing is that the product that we give it, we need to ensure that, but there's a cost attached to it also, but not all the costs are going on a higher side. There are sustainable, there are organic <clears throat> made products which are, you know, at a higher cost today. When I say uh, free, uh, you know, uh, uh, cage-free cage eggs or anything, they are, you know, sustainable products or they are ethical products or anything. But today, like, you know, one of the major example is the glass bottle water. 
you know, that's a total sustainable product. You know, you have to put your plants and everything, but you know, you're giving it to the guest. It's a great uh, initiative. And that is not the cost increase. It's actually a cost saving uh, parameters for the operations part of it. Uh, today, there is other thing, plastic, the single use plastics and everything that we are coming up. So from the current uh, thing with what our commitment to the environment, the carbon reductions and everything that is there, every product and service that we buy it, we need to look at what is the sustainability that I can achieve it. How can I uh, in, uh, impress the partner to make it more sustainable, his production process, his raw material procurement process. So it's a complete change that needs to be done. While there is a cost to it, uh, it, it is a cost uh, is there in certain products, but not in all of the products or services that we do it. Today, like for example, captive power, today all our Mumbai hotels are on captive power, direct captive power. It's a renewable energy that is a sustainable thing. It helps on the cost saving also. So sustainability is both from the cost point of view, from the environment point of view. So it, it has all the uh, angles that needs to be looked at. And we strive uh, and towards that, you know, and that is what the country needs to take it forward. Correct. So whether whether one likes it or no, that's the future. In fact, yes. I want to involve uh, Mr. Gupta here on this because ITC uh, is the front runner uh, in, in this sphere. Uh, in fact, they are the ones who have got the first lead free hotel in the world. And ITC is known for the sustainable practices uh, in the world. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, if you can provide some more light on the initiatives taken by the group. Certainly, Nitin, thanks. I think sustainability is something which in the blood, which runs in the blood of ITC. It's not on the hotels, any anyone or business you see, a lot of focus and a lot of actions are being taken on the sustainability. Rightly said, we have so many hotels and even the office buildings who are lead platinum certified. Wow. Uh, I think we are the only group of hotels in the world wherein consistently we are water positive, carbon positive and solid waste positive. So all the three parameters on all the three parameters of sustainability, we are there for years together. Uh, a lot of practices, uh, you know, being followed and a lot, lot of R&D being done currently in the hotels business as well. Uh, I think we were uh, even long before pandemic, we were the one who, who try to move out of the single use plastics. So uh, the glass bottles with Hari was mentioning, I think we, we get out of, got out of the uh, plastic room bottles and replaced with the glass bottles with the uh, in-house plants on bottling, et cetera, following all the government regulations and statutory guidelines. Uh, we were the ones who are also, uh, you know, worked a lot on, on, on replacing the guest amenities in the rooms with uh, either, uh, you know, taking them out, which were the single-use plastics, making them multi-use uh, products, or even replacing the plastics with biodegradable and compostable packaging. You, you know, our toothbrushes, our razors, etc., all changed into bamboo. You know, a lot of uh, hindsight, a lot, lot of focus happening on the synthetic. I think my colleagues have been mentioning about viscose and rayons and other fabrics. Uh, this is one part of it where you are looking at uh, reducing the carbon footprint by developing those fabrics locally. And India has got, believe me, a very strong supply chain on the textiles. The vertical integration, what we right. have, right? And when you take, you talk of sustainable, India is, by the way, in the top three in the cotton fiber production in the world. So, so much of cotton we have got, which is, uh, you know, called to be natural fibers. So is equally good on silk and wool as well, and linen especially. So it's not only that, also is can the hoteliers also, uh, you know, look at replacing the synthetic component of their textiles with natural component, natural composition, right? Can we, can we look at going organic? Uh, mm -hmm. Not only on textile, textile is one part of it, but also now people are venturing into food, organic food. But you, there are some compulsions, so a lot of initiatives like the guest amenities, the kind of all the garbage bags what we have, are all of them have been converted into compostable garbage bags. So instead of taking the thousand years or 500 to thousand years for, you know, getting broken, here within three to four months, all these bags are automatically in the home conditions, they are broken down. A lot of focus has been on replacing the other items in the rooms with with including the shoe uh, shiners, etc., you know, 
the uh, other bags which are you know laminated paper bags converting them into special coated uh, papers so itc uh, the printing and packaging division one of our vertical one of the business they have developed a special paper which is instead of lamination it is coated with a special resin which is compostable so the whole so the whole paper bag which you require the strength for a particular gsm so instead of lamination you have the coating now which is com completely you know biodegradable and compostable so these are some of the initiatives which are going across the divisions of itc across the businesses of itc and which we are implementing within the hotels as well brilliant it, it, it sounds so good when a leader talks uh, who's who's been following the organization has been following this uh, as as the part of the ethos of the organization and, and not just uh, meeting the social uh, so, so social uh, obligation so uh, unless mr massey has a question i want to move on to mr bernie rao sir yeah they go the one initiative which is very important is the amcs of uh, the equipment which runs the uh, uh, hotels how they are monitored how they are managed how they are monitored as they are, they are looked after very well so do you know we have uh, the complete tracking systems when we have to start the process and how it's a 90 days process which we have put in the implementation and what is the health of our equipment what, what all parts of in what we need when we need to discard that equipment do we need to do it are the servicing done on the regular basis the health checkup which we have put into the every equipment has to have a health checkup done for even every chiller lifts uh, your dgs even your housekeeping machines even the diversity has to do it they have to give up so that our we can save energy we can save time we can give good service to our our guest who is our god to to give the best service to the uh, our guest messi sir uh, you know as you are already on the dais i i i want to come to you uh, i'll go to uh, mr bernidharan after this question it's an important question on what's happening in the world at this moment now uh, all of us know what's happening in russia and ukraine uh, all of us know uh, that the impact is not good uh, Masih, I want to ask you that uh, this Ukrainian crisis will it impact sourcing, uh, especially as countries plan to bypass Russian waters? Uh, do you think will that have any effect on uh, sourcing or supplies here in India? I take a little back uh, when uh, Afghanistan crisis is still hurting us. They hurt a lot. All our dry material, fruit materials, which are coming. from afghanistan has hurt us we have gone through a very bad still the prices which have gone sky high then the china crisis you know the fuel prices went up shortage of containers material coming from fuel of course this crisis will if our they just if 100 it was 98 today i think 115 150 what people are talking about the fuel once the crude oil prices goes up and then you you know, the governments have to increase the you know the fuel prices then once the fuel prices are increased every item price has to go up and then very it's going to affect us it's going to affect everyone and we as a procurement uh, team will have to go through a lot of you know tough times because the management will ask us why the prices are going up but they simply ask why the price increase has come but justification speaking to the vendors i think is going to be a effect good big effect is going to come to us and we we can't do much on that right now if the panelists if we we can't foresee what what kind of price bad uh, crude oil will go up but we already yeah. gone through a very tough time uh, which still we are facing with the delivery schedules are so because the things are not coming from china because they don't have the containers because they are people are buy plotted to china and the, the you know the container price the freight charges have gone sky high in the delivery should which used to be 4 to 5 weeks and now 12 weeks so that these challenges will come within and yeah, uh, yeah. 
So, uh, you know, I want to open this question to all the rest of the panelists as well. Now, we being at the forefront of procurement for hospitality for your different organizations, uh, we know that there is crisis. We know that there will be impact. So can we do anything to lessen the impact? Uh, what can we do to reduce uh, the impact of maybe increased price or shortage of supplies? Uh, is there anything which we can do so then uh, the rest of the world can start following? Uh, would anybody like to contribute to this? Nitin, uh, my view is this, you know, not necessary. It is uh, uh, so see, already, every eight years or 10 years once there is going to be some issue is happening, you know, either it could be a recession or it could be, you know, maybe pandemic or some war. That's going to be a natural way of, uh, you know, like you call it as a kind of economy growing or economy moving, you know, whatever the way. I think this is not something we should take. We should consider it as surprise because this is going to happen. It's happening after five years. You will see something else. After ten years, you will see something else. Last year it was COVID. Maybe ten years before it was recession. It is going to be there. there okay. We as kind of leaders, how are we really responding to the situation? How are we taking this ahead? We cannot stop the war. Okay, for sure. Okay, but what we can do is we just need to take a kind of proactive steps. Wherever possible, we need to keep working towards it. So instead of take, thinking about very big, better to take a baby steps. You know, if there are two categories are actually going to go up, what steps we can quickly take? You know, can we do something like you know, what are the alternate brands we can do? Can we do a bulk purchasing? Can we do a sourcing? You know, can we go to the source to procure, or can we really hedge? You know, can we go with a kind of advance? You know. Uh, get into a kind of an alignment with the supplier and then hedge the buying, you know, for about, can we block our products for six months? So these are all certain things which we need to, which is more regular in practice, you know, which we should keep on doing it, okay? So my view is uh, economy is going to be having ups and downs. That's not only for hospitality, any industry. It could be automobile, it could be uh, maybe logistics, it could be for something else. That's going to be way. I think uh, I strongly believe that Category by category, time to time, we have to keep on taking proactive steps to mitigate the uh, impact. We cannot completely stop the impact. We just need to see how much we can mitigate the impact and how we are communicating and collaborating with the top management, you know, with the suppliers and you know, with the user team, with the clients, guess that's all very, very important. So how effectively are we really making a kind of a very effective communication methodology within the organization? Uh, are we really, you know, forecasting things in advance? Are we talking to and are we really sharing what's going to come up in future you know, with the uh, some of the you know, senior leaders so these things are very critical and important okay and uh, we cannot stop things what's happening in the world completely but we just need to see how we can manage how we respond like uh, i think you know i see uh, gupta ji talked about you no know, rrs you know respond yeah, you know right. that's one thing is very good you know i think it's same thing like you know uh, how do we really uh, respond to the situation that's something is important yeah respond rebuild and sustain correct we due to the paucity of time, uh, I, I will have to close the session very soon. Uh, are there any questions uh, specifically for any panelist? Uh, Vinita, is there any audience who's asked any question uh, for any specific panelist? If there is any, but otherwise, I before that, I'm going to be asking uh, some last question to all of you, uh, and then thereafter, we'll summarize and close it. Close it. If there is any question, please, Vinita, let us know. So my question to all of you, and uh, you might want to uh, come in as and when you wish. Now, uh, there are challenges of sourcing all of us have faced. Uh, all of us have been facing uh, issues with quality of the product, issues with deliveries. Uh, several challenges all of us uh, not just have faced in last two years, but we do face in last many years. Uh, can you tell us some of the biggest challenges which you all have faced in sourcing? And how can one overcome those? Now, the challenges per organization could be different or per individual could be different. But if we can name them, uh, it will help uh, most of us to start working towards it and then get better answers or uh, maybe prepare ourselves uh, better. So uh, all of you, it's, it's open to uh, you. Please tell us the uh, challenges you have faced and then how have you overcome it? So Nitin, I want to come in here. Uh, the, one of the challenges in our industry is the forecasting, you know, in terms of, you know, our industry works on an occupancy based level. It is not that for today, I don't know what my occupancy is tomorrow. So I have a booking for next month. So 
for a complete wedding and, and entire thing is booked and suddenly something happens and the entire booking gets cancelled or suddenly some demand comes in. So it's demand and forecast. So that is one of the major challenges in at least in the operational side, you know, while planning for capital equipments and everything, I do it in advance. But on a day to day operation, the forecasting of for the hotels that is required that they need to plan it and stock the items that one thing and that only can help out through digitization through some analytics through some data lakes and other things which can help out which cannot be 100 percent but today rather than doing manual what does we do we know okay my occupancy is this much this is my banquet function this is my number of covers that has happened based on certain you know arithmetical calculation i arrive at but if i have a data completely and the data runs the algorithm with the machine learning and ai and then th throws out the information I'm at least better than doing a manual thing. You know, it's a large better. Still, I can't control the uh, situation because if something happens or some other changes happen, but at least I can mitigate the situation. So one yeah. thing I for the challenge for the procurement function, because we need to be ready. The stock has to be ready. We need to have the item, you know, whatever I'm buying on a day to day basis. See, certain replacement and other thing, I still have certain planning to be done. If I want to buy linen, I don't buy for tomorrow. OK, I know I have to stock it, plan it, my power value and everything. But on a day to day operations that I need it, you know, all my perishables, fruits, meat, fish, trees, all those provisions items. Those is one which I feel is my view that, you know, right. and the technology can only help us out. Nothing else. You know, the customer behavior and everything is going to be, you know, varying. So that is my thought for. In fact, I uh, want to uh, request uh, Hotelier India, Vinita and Vibor that maybe we should have a one more session uh, soon just on the technological advancement in hospitality procurement. So uh, that that will help the world on what has come in uh, AI, MI, maybe blockchain. There are so many other things which have got into the system which we would like to discuss uh, with the rest of the world. So soon, maybe whenever we, we get the next opportunity, please help us to uh, get, get this platform once again. So, Absolutely, uh, Nitin, I agree with you. And since you asked if there are any questions, there were two questions that were sent across to us uh, by the participants. One was, of course, about the impact of the uh, Ukrainian war and uh, you know how is it going to have any kind of a bearing? You've already touched upon that. The second one, uh, Mr. Hariharan just spoke about. The question was actually, how can uh, technology be a game changer when it comes into preparing uh, procurement uh, professionals in dealing with this disruptions that keep happening? Like Mr. Bernidharan said, there are going to be this kind of uh, challenges every seven to eight years. So how can technology be a game changer? Because especially uh, in light of the fact that the hospitality industry has been a little bit of a laggard when it comes to embracing technology uh, across all lengths and breadth. So, but both of those questions were very beautifully answered. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks. So, we can touch on it. Yes, uh, Masi, sir, uh, you were saying something? I said uh, technology 100% now with uh, Hari Wai and uh, with Abriya, but at the same time, we have to be connected with every vendor Every, so that we should know what is happening, what is going to happen, because they are on the front, they are producing it, they know what, what are the next uh, challenge which will come. That's why we do the town halls, that's why we connect with people to get the information from them, because we are sitting in this beautiful AC room, but they are there in the fields, they are in the market, who will give us the feedback, and if we have a very good gelling with them, very good relation with them, we get the information, information from them. So there is one I, I question think... that has just come in. Can I just uh, throw it up and then you know one of you can take it? All right. So this question is uh, in this time of difficulty where the gap between demand and supply is uh, expanding. What is the one thing that keeps all of you motivated to perform better and deliver uh, the desired results? That's from the Marriott. So uh, what would, would we like to answer that? <laughs> Keep smiling and stay healthy. Okay, <laughs> just take care of your health and then keep you know work on the day. Uh, go by the day. Okay, don't think about you know too much. Okay. And uh, yeah, I I think we have no more questions that are there from the audience. As another one again, uh, which has come about sunflower oil prices becoming volatile due to the Ukrainian crisis. But again, we have uh, I mean that that has been covered. Uh, the prices of various other products and services have also gone up. 
uh, but I'm sure all of you are uh, factoring it within your uh, expenses and uh, your final uh, audits. So uh, we are, and uh, Nitin, yes, I do agree. Uh, one special panel only on the uh, use right. and of technology and its employment in the procurement uh, division is definitely up on the cards. We yeah. will take that up soon. And right. again, I will expect and hope that you will be the one who will lead that too. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure and it's an honor uh, to be with uh, such uh, top leaders and uh, represent uh, the fraternity. So let me summarize. Uh, Gupta, sir, uh, you were saying something. I'm sorry, uh, we, we stopped you in between. Uh, Mr. Sudhir Gupta, sir. Yeah, uh, just one. I think we were discussing, Hari touched upon it. I, you know, one of the big gap which we see in the hospitality industry probably will be on the efficiencies which is particularly come to the inventory terms and the inventory holding part of it. So the digitization of the procurement processes, I think, uh, uh, as Vinita was mentioning, we, we are a bit laggard and, and, uh, and the industry should focus on, uh, there should be a lot of technological development, you know, cost uh, effective and affordable solutions coming out in the market to help the even the smaller hotel chains to, to, you know, go for it, to, to uh, apply the uh, digitization part. It's not only for the efficiency, but also for the patterns and the behaviors and, and the kind of consumptions which we have been having in the past. Today, it becomes very difficult for most of the hotel chains to take out or take out a five-year plan. The disruptions are coming every five years or eight years. How did yeah. we deal with them eight years back? What, what was the kind of tendencies and behaviors which were noticed, right? Had there been a kind of history which were digitized, perhaps some kind of analytics would have been done. And with AI and ML, what Hari mentioned, and Barney was trying to, you know, point on that, uh, it would have been a kind of game changer for, uh, you know, last two years, wherein we would have come to know, like, what kind of demand is going to come in the coming months, at least, if not in the weeks. So, so I think the proactive planning and the efficiency which, which, which can drive this business much more uh, the costs are increasing. Everybody is talking about the costs are high, going high and high because of various reasons. Uh, labor, manufacturing, raw material, uh, you know, shortages, the logistic costs, the petrol, diesel prices, Ukrainian war, you know, you will hear in some time, yeah. you know, all the uh, equipment, dishwashing and all which we're mentioning coming from Germany and Italy, all of the how the rates are going to be affected. 50% of of EU is today is running on the Russian energy, Russian gas. And the prices have already increased by 50% nearly, I am told. The, the kind of shipments which are happening, there are no embargo, but even though in spite of all that, the type of shipments, many of the shipping lines have stopped their ocean vessels uh, out of Russia. So the impact is going to be there. So one side, you are just fighting the, uh, you know, increasing steep rise in the cost. Other side, I think the only tool what we how much of pressure you can you know you know give to the vendor partners to your business partners. I think technological developments, alternative solutions, you know, you know uh, efficient planning uh, and and going with digitization etc. Uh, particularly relying on the analytics part, those could be some of the tools in the hands which which could be very handy for us to sustain these kind of increases. Otherwise, nobody can afford that. Uh, everything can't be passed to the guests. Uh, I think so, in <laughs> today's scenario. Correct. Uh, you know, before we pass on that stress to the supply partners, I think all of us now will have to start getting geared up to start taking the stress of the rate increase, which is going to be coming in. <laughs> or, the short, or the shortages yeah. will be there. So uh, yeah. start uh, meditation, everybody. Uh, <laughs> smile uh, and laugh as what Bernie said. Uh, we'll have to do a lot of research. We have to do great networking talk to the vendors please check whether they are uh, whether they are there uh, otherwise if they run away then it's going to be uh, a big challenge so let me summarize this session today so thankful to all of you for participating in this wonderful pillars of procurement uh, though we touched upon certain topics which which are relevant but uh, in future we will have some more uh, sessions which will help us to prepare better uh, we talked about, uh, Bernie specifically talked about the advanced planning, benchmarking, collaboration. Uh, Mr. Gupta also talked about uh, the lifeline of the business in terms of, he mentioned that it should be respond, rebuild, sustain, 
focus on risk management uh, hari talked about collaboration mr uh, massey talked about collaboration and relationship management and this disruption r and d and substitution uh, we talked about enhancing the area of operations for procurement talked about cost quality delivery sustainability and lastly the collaboration with the supply partners uh, our existence is because we have uh, able partners who who shine uh, uh, who help us to shine uh, and then the organization gives us the credit many a times because our supply partners have been able to deliver things on time or perform on our behalf uh, uh, unless vinita has anything i would like to close this session today and uh, would like to uh, thank uh, all of you once again i want to thank hotelier india want to thank the audience for taking out their time to listen to us uh, we have many things to talk uh, and i'm sure we'll have many more opportunities to provide inputs from stalwarts uh, of the industry uh, thank you varani thank you mr gupta thank you hari haran uh thank you mr massey and thanks uh, vinita and vigor for being there uh, with us um, i would like to close it now and uh, have a good evening all of you thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you and thank, thank you. you for taking the time out have a good evening thank and a great weekend